Hello friends, welcome back. Glad you're here. Uh, Dan Nelson here with another several things. I've got several things going and I'm not going to repeat it all. If you want to know more, uh, just look back at some of my earlier uh, videos, okay? Or on Facebook, Dan Nelson, uh, Dan the Art Man. Uh, this is a drawing done in uh, color pencil, otherwise known as Prismacolor colored pencil. And I am still chasing the technique of Chris or C.F. Payne. Uh, and on this particular illustration, I am largely on my own because uh, I've gone through the Google image search and um, I, there's not, there are not a lot of C.F. Payne illustrations where he has much sky. He just doesn't, he's not not a whole lot of a landscape kind of guy. Uh, I found a few, um, so I've got something to go on. But the question is here, what should I be doing about these branches? And as you can see, I've, I've made my decision already. Um, I'm going to paint right over them. Painting around them would be, for one thing, very time expensive. And uh, I, or I could do airbrush with a mask. That would be even more uh, time draining. So after, I don't know how Chris would do this, but after much scratching of the proverbial chin, as you can see, I've decided to do this acrylic wash is really the best word for it. Not an acrylic glaze. That would that would indicate transparent acrylics. This is acrylics with um, white opaque. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Gesso. <laughs> it's really funny. Sometimes I really can't paint and talk at the same time uh, very well. I I do it all the time, but I just I don't do it very well. I lose words constantly. Words like gesso. Uh, <laughs> it's a pretty common word in my world. Anyway, so this is an, a translucent um, acrylic wash. And I've decided for expediency, that is for just time schedule, to just go right over all the branches. And then I'm going to come back a second time here in just a few minutes with a brown color to go on top of the blue that's here. Now, let me explain a little bit. By the way, I have, in the in the course of my searching in the last several weeks, I have found a couple other artists who have done what I'm doing, which is imitate the Chris Payne technique. And I want to be gentle here, but Let's just say each of the each of the artists that I've discovered, the uh, they've had a generous dose of their own. They haven't imitated him very well. Is what I'm trying to say. They and and I'm that that makes me sound arrogant. No matter what I say next. Okay, I I am hoping to imitate uh, uh, C. F. Payne a little more accurately than some others perhaps have. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to this blue mix as we go toward the horizon. Of course, because skies get lighter as they get lower in the horizon. Uh, so there was a reason I said that. Why did I why did I bring up the subject of others not doing so well? Uh, I forget. There was there was something I was trying to say. Um, anyway. I want to do a really good job. And again, the point, the purpose here is not so that I can be a Sia Payne clone. I mean, look at my website. If you want to see what I normally do, go to dannelsonart.com. I, I have my own career uh, as an oil painter and as a whole bunch of other things. Um, but I really like C.F. Payne's technique, as do a lot of other people. And I think it's, it's one worth passing on to the next generation. If nothing else, it's one worth learning so that I can use it myself. So, um, I'm also doing this series of animals, which 
This is my second one. So I'm still toying with the idea and the plan will be to, to make these available as prints. Making them available as prints, of course, is the easy part. <laughs> Getting people to pay money for them, now there's the rub. Will people actually, the question is, will people actually pay for uh, prints? Either you download it, your, you know, download a, a digital yourself and print it yourself, or um, I provide it to you with a mat or a frame or, you know, all different variations of, of the above. Um, I am looking for some part of my art career that will get beyond one painting, one check, if you know what I mean. I get paid fairly well for some of my paintings, fairly often, but that's not good enough. Uh, all business people know that that is, a, that is not a good long-term path. I need to be making money while I'm asleep and while I'm on vacation. That's how you create wealth, and I need to create some kind of wealth here. My entire uh, retirement plan is based on this. I need to get rich and famous. <laughs> there, the truth is out. <laughs> I'm a pretty typical artist in that regard. If I don't get better known, I'm going to be broke. So uh, this, this fits into that plan. Okay, a couple things. Um, so I've just finished doing one layer of uh, acrylic um, wash, translucent acrylic wash on the whole thing. And a um, couple lessons I've learned because this is my fourth uh, imitation of. Chris Payne. This is my fourth attempt. And one thing I learned is at the end of this stage, everything needs to have acrylic on it. You can't leave bare naked uh, paper showing through. Even if it's going to be white in the final illustration, you need to paint it white if that's the color you want it. The reason is when you get to layer number four, which is oil, um, if you don't have acrylic on it, it'll soak into the paper and make almost black color. So that's what I've learned. And the other thing I've learned is that I want everything at this stage to be rather high key, to be fairly intense color, because the next two layers I'm gonna put on it are going to be dull layers, brown and gray. And um, if this isn't bright enough, everything will be gray. Um, so let me move on to another color. Um, well, let's just do something easy. Let's do the book. I have a I have a whole big collection of brushes down to my right, my watercolor kit. This is my the box, a subset of that, which is small brushes basically. Okay, let's do the cover of the book. And I feel like the cover of the book is going to be ooh, greenish. Yes indeed. Not too bright, not too intense, but a little bit. Uh, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Uh, these old-fashioned books, old-fashioned um, hardcover books that had the green covers. Does that make sense? Okay, I think this color will do. Yep. Okay, one of the mistakes, forgive me for criticizing other people, but if, if you're searching like I've searched for Chris Payne techniques, CF Payne techniques, then... Um, one of the errors that I've seen other people make is they don't make this layer right here. They don't make it quite opaque enough. They make it too transparent, almost like a, a acrylic glaze. And as I understand it, and as I look at Chris's work, one of the purposes of this layer is almost, you could say, to disguise the pencilness. <laughs> The, the you you want to disguise that the earlier layer was done in a scratchy colored pencil. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that that's just one of the things I've observed. Uh, one of the mistakes that I made on my very first one, this layer was not quite opaque enough. So uh, I'm willing to go ahead and and push it 
a little bit. You wanted to you wanted to disguise. I think that's a good word. You wanted to disguise the 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 appearance of colored pencil. When you're all done with a sea of pain painting, you do not want it to look like a colored water uh, a colored a tinted colored pencil painting. Am I making you don't want it to look like a colored pencil painting that's got tint or paint on top of it. You want it to look like one of CF Payne's uh, illustrations, which it has hints of watercolor texture uh, of a colored pencil texture in it, but it does not look like a colored pencil drawing. It just does not. It looks like some kind of weird painting that you can hardly figure out how it was done. And again, that's part of the genius of his of his technique. And part of the way you accomplish that is to make sure that this layer right here is sufficiently opaque. Translucent is the word, but opaque enough, again, to disguise the pencil strokes. Uh, where are my owls here? I hope I didn't take them downstairs and forget to bring... No, here we go. Here, because there's my... Here's my hat. There we go. There's my owls. There we go. Okay, so... I would say the overall color of this owl is brownish-yellow. I don't know if I'm in your field of vision here or not, so let me bring this over. I've just got a roll of primary colors up here, uh, two reds and two blues, so that I can create whatever color I want. 